In this video, we're reviewing the Samsung S23 Ultra in a real-world shoot scenario. I recently had the chance to do a dance shoot with one of my favorite models, Rachel Berg, and as part of the shoot, I put up the Samsung S23 Ultra released in February 2023 against the Canon R5, a 40 megapixel professional camera. But before we go on, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our videos about photography tips, behind the scenes, and gear reviews. So why the S23 Ultra versus the Canon R5? The matchup might seem ridiculous. I mean, why would you put up a cell phone against a professional DSLR worth double the cost of the cell phone? But as a professional photographer, I wanted to answer the question, can cell phones in 2023 take the place of a professional camera? And if not, what are its strengths and weaknesses and use cases? Perhaps you've asked that question yourself. What do professional photographers, people who are invested into image quality day in and day out, what do these people think about these cell phones and the image quality that comes from them? As part of the test, I put up the Samsung S23 Ultra against another Android phone, a five-year-old Huawei P30 Pro, which has served me very well. Does the Samsung S23 Ultra image quality stand up to the test? Let's find out. For this shoot, we went into a challenging environment. We shot underground in a train and station and we wanted to capture emotion from the passing train as part of the image to contrast the grunginess of the environment with the elegance of the pose of a ballerina dancer. First up, we put up the Canon R5 and for this, we took shots using two flashes, the Godox V1 with MagMod, gel filters, and the mag sphere on the main key light. We wanted a sense of blue and orange complementary light, so we used the CTO orange gel as well as the blue gel in the background to give a little pop of color. Because we weren't able to use a flash for the Samsung S23, we chose to use an LED light to light the model. As expected, the Canon R5 performed beautifully and was able to capture the motion of the train and was responsive as well as giving a good image with very little noise. The Canon autofocus system in such challenging situations is second to none and was able to keep up with everything that I threw at it. And that's not surprising considering this camera is a $6,000 professional camera that I've used for weddings all over the world. 6,000 Canadian that is. The Samsung S23 was next. Because the trains were passing at intervals that made it impossible for me to capture the exact same scene, I had to wait for the trains to come the other way. So that meant the Samsung S23 scenes may seem a little bit different, even though we did our very best to reproduce the exact same scenario as the Canon R5. One of the things that I found right away was that although the Samsung S23 Ultra was responsive, it was still significantly slower to capture images than the Canon R5. When I press the shutter button for the Canon R5, I'm expecting to capture the, the exact moment that I'm pressing the shutter button for. But for the Samsung S23 Ultra, there seemed to be a delay from the moment that I pressed the shutter button to the moment that the capture was actually created and I was able to preview it. Ready? Whenever you're ready, go for it. Okay, so first thing I'm noticing is that it's way slower to take pictures, so you gotta try to hold it. During that time, the camera had captured the image. It ran all of its AI algorithms to be able to create the image, and that created a sense of delay. In fact, it seems that throughout this entire test, the common theme is that a lot of the gains for the Samsung S23 Ultra were more so in the software side versus in the optical camera systems. Now, despite the lag on the camera phone, we were able to compensate. Our model, Rachel, was able to hold the pose long enough for some of our shots to be able to capture a similar look with the S23. And what we found with the immediate image comparison was not surprising. As with all cell phone cameras, the sensors are so much smaller than the sensor for a full frame professional DSLR. That bokeh, which is that blurred background look where the subject is separated from the background, was simply not present. I mean, cell phones get around this by applying artificial blur afterwards using software. So again, software being the method by which these cell phone cameras are able to mimic professional photography. But because we wanted to test not just the camera itself, we were shooting in pro raw mode. And in pro raw mode, the camera does not apply the, the blur effect. And we wanted to be able to capture raw on the S23 Ultra so that we weren't relying entirely on the camera's artificial intelligence to do the post-processing for us. But as a professional photographer myself, I wanted to see whether the raw files were able to be manipulated to look similar to the files that we would create from the Canon R5. My personal experience with using the Samsung S23 Ultra is that 
If your subject is not moving, you're able to capture some very beautiful images. And if the element of bokeh is not necessarily important, such as if you're shooting against a simple backdrop like a white wall or a dark wall, or if you're shooting wide angle, in which case even the Canon R5 would not have exceptional bokeh because it's a wide angle, then the images coming out of the Samsung S23 Ultra can rival the R5 and professional cameras very easily, although triggering a flash off camera is a totally different other issue. One of the deficiencies that I found with the Samsung S23 Ultra was when we were shooting underground with strong backlighting, the signs in the back of the model were providing a very strong backlighting situation. The Canon R5 performed beautifully and was able to focus on the face of the model even though the scene was heavily backlit. But this is where you start to see the deficiencies of cell phone software and cell phone cameras. It was deferring to focusing on the background, giving us a slightly blurry model, and her eyes were not quite in focus, whereas the background was in focus. It was deferring to focusing on the strongly backlit background versus the model. This can probably be fixed with software updates. And if Samsung is watching this video, this would be a great thing to improve on for future firmware and software updates. Afterwards, we went to the street to test the zoom ability of the Samsung S23 Ultra. We were pitting the Samsung S23 Ultra's built-in zooms with this Canon 70-200mm lens that I had brought. And I was shooting at f2.8 on the Canon lenses, as low as the aperture could go for the Canon R5. So you can probably guess the result. The images from the Canon R5 were beautiful with amazing separation of the model from the background. And the Samsung S23 Ultra at super zoom was able to capture a great deal of detail in an image optically with a model that was quite a ways away from the camera. I was so surprised at how far that 10x reach was. The optical 10x zoom mode on the Samsung S23 Ultra was even longer than the 200mm on a Canon R5. I would venture to guess that it would probably be closer to a 400mm equivalent. But as expected as well, the Samsung S23 Ultra image had virtually no background blur whatsoever. The separation between the background and the model was simply not present. So if you're planning on using the Samsung S23 Ultra zooms as a portrait lens, you would probably be not very well satisfied. So after bringing the images into Adobe Photoshop using Nero filters and applying depth blur, I was able to mimic a background blur similar to what we might see in professional cameras. But of course, software is never perfectly accurate versus the real thing and can sometimes give us artifacts which you can see in the images if you were to zoom closer to find details, such as the hands and parts of the clothing. Now, if you were quite good at Adobe Photoshop editing, you could probably get around that using custom editing, but not everyone would have those kinds of skills. Then after the model session was wrapped, I had the chance to go and test the zoom capability for the Canon R5 versus the Samsung S23 Ultra in a landscape and building setting. And what I found was that the strength of the Samsung S23 Ultra is absolutely in its zoom capability. It can go from 0.6x wide angle to a 10x zoom. And when you're in the camera app mode, that is not the pro raw mode, you're able to also push that zoom to even 30x or 100x zoom. And the detail that was able to be recovered from the 100x mode was very impressive. I also tested the video zoom capability and was very pleased to find that the 10x was also present in video mode and that you were able to zoom smoothly from 0.6x to 10x smoothly with a gradual transition in video mode and with the image stabilization for handheld video performing very, very well. This would be a very useful tool if you were documenting family events using a cell phone video camera and wanted to zoom closer to the action while starting out wide angle in the video. Now when I took the images from the S23 Ultra into the computer and looked at the EXIF data on the images using Photo Mechanic, what I found was that the actual optical zoom is only from the 0.6x to the 10x, and that the 30x in the 100x mode is only in fact a digital zoom. So again, this brings us back to that theme that we were talking about, that a lot of the gains that we're seeing in modern day cell phones is not so much in the optical department, so much as it is in the software department, where it seems that software from the Samsung for the S23 Ultra made it possible to be able to extract detail and up res those images for the 30X and the 100X from the 10X image. So to wrap this all up, 
What is my opinion as a professional photographer about the camera system for the Samsung S23 Ultra? Can this cell phone replace professional cameras? The answer to that is no. In my personal and professional opinion, the Samsung S23 Ultra is yet another very useful photography tool. And like all photography tools, you have to understand its limitations and its strengths while using it within its appropriate context. If you wanted to use it as a professional camera and achieve bokeh with separation of your subject with the background, you would probably be a little bit disappointed. Although the artificial intelligence in the software system tries to do its best, it is not able to perform nearly as well as a real optical system with a professional camera. And if you wanted to use the camera for ultra responsive photojournalism and capturing peak moments like sports, you might also be a little bit disappointed. There's always going to be a lag with software as it performs computing and runs algorithms to create its images. But if you use the cell phone camera as the best camera available to you in your pocket at the time to be able to capture everyday moments with people that you love or landscapes or scenes that you need to document but that you don't have a professional camera for, this camera is fantastic. I can see this camera being used for things like family pictures at family events, taking snapshots of kids being kids, being an excellent travel camera with an amazing zoom, for taking pictures of animals or landscape scenes that are very far away. And the image quality and the signal to noise ratio is outstanding for this camera, even with its sensor size. The ability to be able to shoot raw and to be able to manipulate the exposure to your liking using Pro Raw app is also wonderful and gives even advanced amateur photographers plenty of room to be able to play with the images. And again, where this camera really stands out is its Super Telephoto 10X mode and even 30X and 100X modes and the impressiveness of the software to be able to extract details and up-res images for ultra-zoomed photos. And to answer the question how the Samsung did against the P30 Pro, along the same lines that we were saying before, in my opinion, the main gains for the Samsung camera system are in the software system, not so much in the optical gains. Although if you think about the Samsung as more than just a camera, but an ecosystem of software and the processing power, it does quickly overtake the P30 Pro. So that's it from me. If you like this video, please do leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.